Welcome to Mastara, as today we are looking at the food and drink of Mastara. I'm running a bit late because my holiday schedule in the real world has been a bit more than hectic, unfortunately. Now, rather than just talk about real world foods in Mastara, which would be super easy, I'm also looking at diet and trade so your characters will know what they can order on the menu no matter where they are. Helping me in this endeavor is Tarla's Epicurean Delights, a section of the Mastara Player's Handbook that really needs to be in the DM's Guild. But until then, at least I can crib my notes from it. I'm Mr. Welch, and it's snack time. Since Mastara is heavily tied to real-world nations, it's really easy to translate that to the fantasy world. Stop over in Bergthoven for some Stroopwafel. Ethengar is going to have fermented mare's milk for a drink. The Northern Reaches has a full menu of Scandinavian food. Vodka is all the rage in Karamikos. If you're playing in the game, mention the various food smells based on your knowledge of what the nation has. You're not going to find alcohol in Yalarum. At the same time, tea isn't going to be served at the tables of the Etrugan. When it comes to food production, a few nations stand out above all the rest. The Five Shires is obviously the first nation on that list, as the Hen produce far more food than even they can consume. They export the rest, usually selling the excess to Darakin, where it can be distributed from there. Darakin produces a large amount of food on its own. The sheer size of the nation allows for food production far beyond all of their neighbors except for the Shires. The size also allows the nation a large amount of livestock, something that the smaller nations can't compete with. The province of Corindus and Thyatis also shares the focus on agricultural and livestock. The massive wheat fields of the province feed a majority of the empire, making it one of the most strategic locations in all of Mastara. Its counterpoint in Alphacia is the island of Belisaria, which produces far more food than it should through the means of magic. Almost all the food is helped by magic of one sort or another, from altering the weather to increasing crop yields directly with growth spells. Transportation of food is tricky due to spoilage. Many nations have adopted various methods to preserve food before it spoils. Because the food is usually salted, dried, or pickled, most people in cities aren't used to fresh food without the help of magic. The two trading nations of Minerthad and Derekin, however, have devoted large amounts of study to creating spells that magically preserve food while they're being moved to new markets. The merchant princes use spells that prevent spoilage inside of certain containers, or in the more extreme cases, the holds of entire ships. Because of the merchant princes, the citizens of even the most urban areas can frequently enjoy fresh food or unspoiled milk, for a price, of course. demi humans, other than the overachieving hen, have their own methods of crop production or agriculture. Elves use their extensive magical talents to create more food than the forest should be able to produce in the space provided. They rarely trade the food with outsiders, but they make sure that no elf starves in the process. They create just enough food to feed their people, and never let any food go to waste or endanger the forest. Dwarves are a strange case in that they have an entire clan devoted to food production in Clan Werewolf. While the clan is important enough to be considered a major clan, they're looked down on by a large majority of the other clans as farming just isn't something dwarves should do. They grow crops and livestock above ground, which makes them even more suspicious to the other clans, as well as maintaining the fungal forests below. For many clans, the Werewolf are a necessary evil, and a few believe they need to be stripped of their status and forced to till the land under the supervision of the more prestigious clans. Gnomes are a strange case because of the differences between the two types of gnomes. Hill gnomes keep gardens and maintain herds of livestock for consumption like sheep, goats, and pygmy megafauna. They grow enough to have surplus for trade, but their tastes are also peculiar so their food isn't exactly a bestseller in other markets. The sky gnomes in Serene have the problem that the city can't grow enough food to support itself, so it trades with other nations to keep their larders full. Because they're a tourist attraction, they also adopt the food of other nations that are much more popular with the visitors. They may love kublots, a gnomish bread consisting of over a dozen spices, including saffron, peppermint, cayenne, garlic, and cinnamon, but it's hard to sell to tourists. With the exceptions of Yularam and Etrugan, every nation prides itself on its alcoholic beverages. For many nations, the main concern is ease of creation. Simple wines, ales, and hard drinks are quick to ferment and sell well in taverns. But some nations take great pride in the creation of alcohols, wine especially. The nation of Renardi in the Savage Coast has a tradition that elevates its best vintners to noble status because they love their wine so much. Derekin and Minerthad make some of the finest liquors explicitly for sale abroad, with the most famous being all reckless brandy, which is only sold on the island nation's famous holiday. The few bottles that aren't drunk during the wild festivities go for hundreds of gold pieces in other nations. A feature found normally only in the nations of Glantry and Alphacia is the use of magic to enhance food and drink. While those nations are the most common to do this, Alphine and Rockholm do have their share of enchanted food as well. Some enchantments enhance the potency of drink, such as Glantry's Azure Lune de Vin, a wine that removes fatigue when consumed, but the hangovers are legendary. The province of Norwald creates its famous ice wine, which is always cold no matter how it's transported. 
the goodly folk of the She Court even get in on creating magical drinks with Goodfellow's verdant spirits, where a single shot can floor even the hardiest dwarf. Magical drinks aren't common at all. The price alone is outside the budget of most nobles. Like the Renardi wines or the Minrathad brandies, enchanted drinks are kept in cabinets for show and only serve to impress guests. Most commoners are happy with simple breads and low-cost beers. Cheese is also a common food in Mastara, as most of their varieties carry well and are easy enough to make. While fresh food isn't that cheap for commoners, it's not unheard of on the plates of farmers and merchants. In fact, when the farmers of the Shires manage another bumper crop, the price of food can drop so much that fruits and meats can grace the table of all but the poorest families. Food is commonly sold at the various markets. While larger towns have their own markets, most of the smaller villages and settlements rely on centrally located trading posts. Here, farmers will try and sell their goods to the various traders and merchants needing food for cities. The larger markets will have representatives from Derekin or Minrathad, depending on whether the market's located on the coast or not. It's frequently a race to market, as the merchant princes tend to spend all their money as fast as possible. The farmers that arrive first get the best prices. This can cause all sorts of resentment when hen are involved, as their agricultural skills are second to none and can drive down food prices due to overabundance. For this reason, halflings tend to have their own farmers' markets to avoid resentment among the tall folk. The majority of farmers are still subsistence farmers. Few grow enough crops to sell at market. Farmers tend to keep animals that they can sell for wool or leather instead of large crops. Only the larger nations like Derekin and Thyatis have enough room for plantation-sized farms, and even then only a few can afford those. That's the food and drink of Mastara. I didn't want to just read off the list of foods I compiled that, because that got boring quickly. The topic is mostly trivia, but it does help with immersion when playing. So, I need a new topic, and we've got gemstone dragons going on the list of potential topics. I'm trying to keep up a schedule, but the holidays have got me going all over the map lately. Quite literally. I'll get back on schedule when things calm down. But until next time, Feliz Navidad, as my ancestors said back in ancient Kimru.